Sephiroth, Enslaved, Take, Mayhem, Isan, Satyricon, Dark Throne, and this Winter Beast. Solo music by former Immortal frontman Abbath. I'm Ian Christie, and this is Bloody Roots. one of many epic tracks there from the masterful Abbott solo record, the first solo album by the former Immortal frontman, long-running Norwegian black metal band, 
who have taken many surprises, right, in their long career. Although there was a period where they were the only functioning band without members in prison or uh, shipped off to different various faraway countries. But Immortal still forced to take years off. And in recently, uh, surprisingly kicking out Abbott without warning, leading to a protracted legal battle and eventually leading to Abbott launching out, venturing out on his own and a self-titled band that just oozes metal power and fun and fun. This is Ian Chris, the author of Sound of the Beast, the complete head-banging history of heavy metal and the publisher of Bazillion Points Books, home to two books in particular key to understanding today's show. It's Metallion, the Slayer Mag Diaries, and also Slayer Mag Volume 10, the red hardcover reissue of the 1993 zine collecting interviews with all these bands you'll hear today. Every single one, Burzum, Take, Mayhem, Eson, Arcturus, Gorgoroth, Enslaved, Dark Throne, Satyricon, and Immortal, uh, whose Abbott you just heard. Direct yourself to learn of the past at bazillionpoints.com. But our duty, honor, and pleasure Pleasure today is not dwelling in the early 1990s when these bands first released demos, debut albums, and made headlines around the world for a slew of dozens of church burnings, various assaults, violence, and even murder. Most of the bands we'll hear today were not even involved in any of that directly, or uh, if so, that was 25 years ago, and th- those people were not even 25 at the time that the events happened. Bands like uh, Emperor were basically 17, 18, 19 years old, releasing their early demos, getting this Norwegian black metal sound down, and you know it's been decades since that time. These people are... Most of the people we'll hear today are uh, seasoned veterans of the metal world, and it's going to be a pleasure and interesting to see how this all turned out. Really remarkable that a scene of so many bands of such quality to begin with, still so many of these bands are active. In just a couple minutes, something from the recent Mayhem album, Esoteric Warfare. At this point, Mayhem having gone through many lineup changes, but still with Hellhammer on drums, Necro Butcher on bass, and a uh, longtime off and on frontman Attila Chihar from Hungary, who actually, of course, recorded the vocals on their classic The Mysterious Dom Satanis album, the first full length statement of early Norwegian black metal. We're going to hear something by Take, not probably the lowest profile band in today's show, but still, they've been around since like 1993. Hailing from Bergen, Norway, and unlike some bands you're not going to hear today, like Dimu Borgir, who have basically been inactive for like five years now, uh, Take more and more active all the time, touring the United States and taking black metal into a new dimension with a kind of Led Zeppelin rock and roll feel. First, let's get here a solo track by the main man of Emperor, always one of the more thoughtful and musically gifted black metal band leaders, Isan from The Great Emperor, with an incredibly crystal clear track here called My Heart is of the North. I'm Ian Christie. This is Bloody Roots, your weekly heavy metal history lesson. Today, bringing you up to date on present day music by Norway's black metal elite.
There you go, Yoln from Unskiptar, a recent day Burzum record. And it's got a, obviously a can of worms even mentioning the name Burzum because the guy's a dyed in the wool racist. He was a murderer of somebody who trusted him. And just all in all, a troublemaker and a nuisance and an unpleasant presence in the metal scene for years now, despite being in prison for 20 years, still a nuisance. Such a nuisance that he was banished from Norway or basically felt like he had to leave, went to France where he's there making a nuisance of himself. Most of the present day Burzum records uh, consist of him beating rocks and stones together and getting back in touch with some ancient primal Neanderthal mythos that uh, he's he and his wife have been developing now for the last couple of years. But that record, Um Skiptar, tapping into some of the greatness of his classic Philosophum record. I can only take it in doses knowing what a complete flaming asshole this guy is. But at the same time, in those doses, it's undeniable. Burzum is a truly special band, even if the main man is a uh, immature lunatic. This is Bloody Roots, your weekly heavy metal history lesson today, getting up to date with present day music by Norway's black metal elite. We've heard tracks by bands, members of Immortal, Emperor, new stuff by Mayhem, Take, and Burzum. Moving ahead, we'll get into Arturus. The originally uh, like very progressive black metal band that has gotten no less progressive over the ages, no less impressive. Dark Throne, who have taken so many twists and turns over their 25-year career, from death metal to black metal. And if you fail to see the difference between those two styles of music, just listen to the first Dark, Th- Dark Throne album and the third side by side. It's a night and day difference. In recent years, they've been exploring... Uh, pretty much every variety of metal from even some punk rock and crust, but we're going to get into a very long, epic, traditional heavy metal song by what was once considered the purest of the pure Norwegian black metal bands. Gorgoroth in a couple minutes, another band just like Immortal, who we mentioned were, had been ripped apart recently by, by squabbles that escalated into court battles. Well, same thing happened with Gorgoroth. But original guitar player Infernus has wrested back control of the band that was rightfully his. We'll hear a track from Instinctus Bestialis by them in a couple of minutes. But first, the one most consistent and impressive band out of all of the early Norwegian black metal bands, Enslaved. Consistently every two or three years or even more frequently putting out incredible, expansive, super energized and thoughtful black metal releases, infusing more and more progressive elements, but always retaining that aggression. I uh, think somebody said, you know, there's no danger of enslaved crossing over like Opeth has into pure progressive rock. These guys are always firmly rooted in that black metal heart. This is a track from In Times, the latest by the great Enslaved. You're listening to Bloody Roots of Present Day Music by Norway's black metal elite. I'm Ian Christie on Sirius XM.
the pages of your heavy metal history lesson. Bloody Roots. <laughs>
I mean, come on. Epic heavy metal by the great Dark Throne. Completely unpredictable band following their own whims and fancies all the way down the darkest, deepest heavy metal rabbit holes. Thank you for joining me today. Bloody Roots recapping present day music by Norway's black metal elite with a little more time would have been able to squeeze in recent music by the uh, long missing Mysticum, one of the first bands to combine black metal and drum machines and industrial elements and also the long running Gehenna from Norway who have kept their contentious, hateful black metal alive through all of these years. Like I think I said earlier, it's it's amazing you pop open something like Metallion, the Slayer Mag Diaries, or the Slayer Mag Volume 10, um, that, that zine that consisted of super long, dense interviews with all of these black metal bands prior to the w- police catching on to what was going on in Norway and starting to make arrests. Uh, you look at the bands, and they're all still here today for the most part, 80 to 90% continuing to still push the envelope. These are not backwards-looking bands. They contain the black metal in their DNA, but still pushing out towards the outer stratosphere, outer limits. Really, really impressive what's, com- what's gone on. For the most part, continuing to stand for the same quality that uh, first caught the world's attention back in the early 1990s, nearly 25 years ago. Today's playlist, it's online at roots.bazillionpoints.com. And I urge you to look deeper into the history and origins of black metal at bazillionpoints.com with books like Metallion, the Slayer, Mag Diaries, Swedish death metal, even telling in part the story of Norwegian black metal, that book, and also the Slayer Mag Volume 10 red hardcover reissue. Aside from Dimmu Borgir, who I mentioned, who came along a little bit later, but were uh, also have been inactive over the last few years, Satyricon, one of the most hugely successful Norwegian black metal bands, and uh, involved in the early 1990s scene. These guys, uh, Frost and Satyr, branching out and doing everything from winemaking to playing with 1349, you know, modern day Norwegian black metal band. And while maybe falling behind in the Satyricon release schedule, still active in very ambitious projects like this. Impossible to imagine back 25 years back when uh, the churches were starting to go up in smoke in all across Norway. And these bands were releasing their first demos getting the first recordings done at the Grieg Holland, where so many of these records were made, that uh, after years of controversy and police interest and and prison sentences in some some cases, that black metal would become the cultural identity of Norway to the extent that it has. I remember being at the Inferno Fest in Oslo 10 years ago, you know, seeing such an amazing lineup of bands like Emperor plus Cathedral, Dismember, Bolt Thrower, and riding in the train from the airport was a video advertisement for the Inferno Fest. This has been the scourge of Norway just a few years earlier, and now it was being celebrated as a great cultural contribution to the world, which it is. Well, here's Satyricon doing Rapine Bastard Nation with the help of the National Norwegian Opera. As much as the bands we heard today have somewhat conquered the world, they've surely conquered Norway. I'm Ian Christie. Thank you very much for joining me today. Catching you up on present day music by Norway's black metal elite on Bloody Roots, your weekly heavy metal history lesson. Thank you very much for joining me. No, you're
just heard Ian Christie's Bloody Roots, Liquid Metal's hour-long crash course in headbanger history. Hear it again Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 Pacific. And stream Bloody Roots on demand with your phone or at home on Sirius XM connected devices and speakers. Go to SiriusXM.com slash listen at home to learn more.